I, I just saw this. This is really genius. Why no one thought of it? Touch screen, right? You want to adjust your radio, right? Oi! This is the best way to tune your radio. All right? Go, 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 go. Okay. Go there and sit down. Put on your seatbelts. No, 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 no. no. Sit down, sit down. Seatbelts. Seatbelts. Okay. Come on, guys. No. No. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. The Nissan Serena Highway Star. So why highway? Because this car, if you pass by anything that is remotely badly surfaced. The car will just crash over it. Um, I understand it because they have to maximize the interior room, so the suspension all they all have very little travel. I mean, a smaller wheel well means larger space, right? So anything that is badly surfaced, other than anything other than flat, beautiful surface, the car will just ping pong over it. Okay. Let's get that out of the caveat because uh, that is already one thing that we don't need to say anything, you know. It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, this car, I was like, wow, so nice, it's smooth, the drivetrain is smooth, it's comfortable, and then boom, boom, okay, yeah, all right. But for normal roads like that, it's, it's nice, it's decent. See, even over speed bumps, it's all perfectly okay until you meet uh, bad roads okay? okay see that you can hear all that when you go through all this the sound will just come in so um, not a lot of soundproofing I would say for from undercarriage but if you're talking about wind noise and all that I think it's all right because the engine note drowns the wind noise okay let's accelerate Just brought my family up Genting, fully loaded, you know, like four big male adults and then uh, three ladies. So it's all right, it's all right. You can do the job, uh, just that it's not, it won't be very powerful. But other than that, if you're on these sort of roads, nicely paved, you know, it's very smooth. The car is smooth and comfortable and uh, visibility is great. Okay, so uh, I I never thought I would review a boxy MPV and then I go like, hey, this is not bad, but hey, this is not bad, this is not bad. Um, in fact, my impression yesterday when I hopped into the car first time, because we were rotating amongst our colleagues, right, I was like, wow, as I was touching, you know, I like touching around cars and all that, all this feels... Um, a step up from one of their most popular so-called seven-seater SUV X-Trail it's a five, five plus two okay it's not a seven-seater and uh, this car's interior build is a lot better now this engine ooh, it's a direct injection engine if I'm, if I'm not wrong because a standard two liter will not continue pushing like that all right and yeah i think it's a nice engine it's loud but it's a nice engine because it has some power you know not a turbocharge but i believe it is direct injection sorry i don't study before i review a car so um sorry all, all i know is that it's two liter all right um, handling is decent. It's an MPV. I don't expect a lot. There's a lot of play on the steering wheel and, uh, and uh, Let's not talk about whatever steering feedback or whatever that this is an MPV. Okay, so that is none of my concern for that. Okay, uh, 130k, what do you want? And the most surprising thing about this car is the price 135,000 because uh, 
if you look at the whole thing, you would have expected it to be 160, 170, you know, as an MPV of this size. Uh, but we know market is not easy now. All right. So 135K, I would say you get a lot. You get a proper infotainment screen. But there is a but, okay? Because this is the entertainment. Okay, I wouldn't call it infotainment because this is entertainment. That is information. All right. So the information screen is over there. That one would be the one that is linked throughout the car. This is the one that you can take it out and throw it away and change another one. Okay, so there's no infotainment per se, but there's entertainment and there's information. Okay, um, so yeah, this one has those, these are those mild hybrid systems. Okay, and um, pretty all right because when the engine cuts off, there's still air coming out from the aircon, even though noticeably less cold. Okay. And uh, now it's just myself in the car. Of course, the car will accelerate decently. But when you have a lot of people, it's just there to move you, okay? And if it can do gunting, it can do other stuff. You won't do it really fast, but you get it done at the end of the day, all right? So if, if the Proton X70 is the best buy SUV of 2018, I would say this one is the best buy MPV uh, yes uh, there are a lot of remarkable stuff that the X70 does especially when it comes to soundproofing quietness and all that stability handling and all that um, this one it doesn't score any points on handling or driving uh, in fact the ride or the suspension can be considered horrible okay even the steering wheel there's a lot of free play here um, it's yeah uh, if this car were to be given a test on handling it might score very very badly very very badly okay but I understand this car if it is if it is just for day-to-day -day runabouts right it's you don't need a car I mean it's in fact it's not for car enthusiasts anyway they just drive smoothly they just drive smoothly they don't full accelerate and all that they just roll and then they just get their job done so you want the steering to be um, to not be that sharp I mean, what's the point of a sharp handling steering wheel on an MPV anyway right so it's just comfortable everything is dampened in terms of the controls and all that um, you see the steering wheel it does nothing it does absolutely nothing so uh, if you're asking me what about refinement refinement of the X70 is miles ahead from this this one doesn't have a lot of refinement but there is a lot of things that I like about this car a lot a lot okay and this is very very Japanese actually a lot of Japanese domestic market cars they don't really give a hoot about road noise or wind noise because they don't drive really fast uh, they are in the city all the time um, yeah so right let's do the walk around because I I don't know man I mean if you if you ask me this car is it's not nice to drive it's decent to ride in but it's so practical that I kind of like it all right let's go around let's see yep 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 Ha! Ah, the reverse camera! What the toot is that? What the toot, the toot, the toot is that? The reverse camera. Come, let me show you guys. This is the one that I was like, what? Okay, I'll bring you guys out. And, uh, okay, this is my eye level. This is the screen from Clarion, where I expect, you would have expect, when you shift into reverse, this thing to come out because this one has radio, audio player, video player, mobile link. Ah, will YouTube sue them for the icon anyway? Applications, phones, and all that. You know, it's touch screen. You would have expect when you shift into reverse, the screen to come out from here. But <laughs> I kid you not. Okay, the screen is over there, and it's so small from the driver's seats. 
you have to take a double take especially the one on the right even though the one on the right is larger the one on the left is smaller but the one on the left is the 360 cam and it's pretty easy to decipher uh, where you are what's around you but the one on the right because uh, it's pretty low resolution and it's so far away right I have to actually move closer to see what I'm looking at <laughs> all right so that's the that's the only graph I had and I noticed there's there's not pretty nothing much here okay so uh, yeah and there are no markers over here so uh, see that using this you control that which is pretty all right I would say but I just find it weird because uh, whatever that is displayed here could have been done at this blank space but anyway I'm just nitpicking here all right uh, the graphics of that one is pretty smooth you know the um, the effects are all right it's very decent okay and um, let's do the walk around all right hi guys Bobby from evolution Malaysia our website is evomalaysia.com and our Facebook is horizon Malaysia all right so uh, before I start, I hope if you like, if you guys like what we're doing, uh, all this hard work that we're putting in, putting in, uh, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up or like if you like what we're doing. All right, uh, our whole team consists of myself, Con, Fadil, and Bing, and all four of us. What we we'll give you is the most honest car reviews. Uh, all right, but do take note because uh, our car reviews are strictly straight out of the point i mean straight away we, we edit as little as possible so sometimes there might be foul languages and um we just don't care what the manufacturer thinks all right cheers let's let's go on this is the um oops stop working okay this is the nissan serena highway star okay and um they have updated the looks and after i got this test car then only then I noticed that there are so many of them around the market. Now this one has some unique uh, paint combination. I quite like this color even though I can't really pinpoint what's the name of it. Uh, it could be called cappuccino or cappuccino with more milk, something like that. Uh, this one then is uh, brown or bronze color. A unique combination but it sort of works. Okay, and amongst all previous generation of Serena's, this one looks uh, markedly the most uh, luxurious looking you know there is a there is a hint of Valfire here even though this bar that separates the headlamps uh, started with the uh, Nissan El Grand okay and uh, Valfire sort of borrowed the design let's have a look at its front um, so you can tell the headlamp clusters is not exactly this but then this plastic bit is there separating them okay pretty all right projector here and uh, the chromes they are not too in your face for Asians it's not in, in our face because uh, we have a lot of cars that with this sort of huge multi grill a lot of lines a lot of stuff I mean Asians are uh, uh, you look at Japanese cars right a lot of them are like that so maybe Europeans or Americans you guys might not like it but this car is not sold over there it's not sell it's not being sold in your markets okay let's have a look at the side you can see it is huge it is boxy and the window part is almost half of the car's height okay and if I come to the rear this car is actually pretty tall I am 5 foot 11 now there are some interesting details this part okay it's one giant glass house okay and that separates the a pillar it looks like there is a continuation of the a pillar inside here so it's like a y fork okay pop pop gives the roof the strength but it separates it and give you really good visibility all right then you look at the driver's side window uh, it is lower over here and then you have the door mirrors very large you can see a lot and then it glides up you know to give it a little bit of style instead of looking very drab like the mercedes v-class right the v-class looks like a freaking commercial vehicle this one doesn't all right then you have this part that comes out like that pretty decent pretty nice now 
most of the time when you have a Japanese MPV, one of the biggest thing that people don't like about it is when you're trying to load stuff, right? Because this is what <laughs> this is what you're getting. You, know, you need a, you need a lot of room to open it. In fact. Uh, if you park your car in those malls that were built in the 70s or 80s, I mean in Asia here, um, after you nicely reverse in, you will not be able to open the boot lid, okay? Because it's just one huge door. All right, close it back. What's your solution for it? Nice. This is really nice, okay? I appreciate that. And uh, I like car makers that put, a, put some effort in it. And that's also the reason why I love BMW wagons. Even though I don't own one, all BMW wagons, you can open the glass door. Okay, with all seats up, this is the space you get. Pretty normal for an MPV, let alone this is the mid-size. This is not a full size like a Velfire and all that. One thing you will notice with this car is the plastic quality. It's hard, but it's really smooth and nice to the touch. It's not a scratchy type anymore. That's pretty nice all right so you get some room it's pretty deep when this thing all the seats are up okay and uh, to remove the seats you'll be doing some uh, rather Japanese style you know Jap Japanese right they don't really care if it looks like that this is something that the Europeans would like no 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 it's our pride you know but Japanese don't care because they're very pragmatic, okay? The Japanese cars, a lot of them, they don't even need to worry about whether you think, what, what are your thoughts about them, you know? For them, it's just, we want the solution. You know, if it solves the problem, so be it. See that? It's offset even. Why? <laughs> because, yeah. That's where you store it, okay? Put these boys down. This is not easy to do one-handed, but if I could do it, then uh, I will achieve success. Now, I have no idea how to remove that. Probably with the mechanical, probably with the mechanical key with the remote to, you know, or something to, to, to punch it out. But anyway, I'll try and see if on a regular usage, if, if three person have sat here and then you've pulled this seatbelt up down for three person abreast, will you be able to collapse this still? I'll try, okay? Put that down. Pull this up. Yes, you can. I guess. I guess. Can I? And then uh, what do I do? Okay, push this in. And then... Oh, oh, bit of a hard work. Okay. And then put this here. Am I doing it right? Oh, oh is it like that? Oh, this doesn't look very... Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. That's how it goes. Let me do this. All right. Pull. Down you go. Up you come. Not a very elegant thing if you're... If you're... Okay, let me do this. All right. And you can even tighten it further. <laughs> okay, that's very Japanese for you. All right. Once you do that, you have room but then the seats really take up a big space all right of course if it could be engineered in a way whereby let's see what we have here hey we have a lot of room here and this this lid is pretty good quality so unlike some cars like the uh, odyssey or the uh, kia sorento where both seats can be folded into the compartment. This one just goes up like that. I mean, it's cheaper, but then I would really appreciate those that you can hide the seats away because seats really take up a lot of space. But for the size of this car, these are proper seats at the back there. So uh, I'm all right with that. Once it's up, you get more vertical room, but then you get a lot less horizontal space. Okay, let's get it out. Okay, come to the second row. This is not bad as well for uh, for a mid-sizer. I hope I can do it in one take. Hi. Oh yes, oh yes, I got it. Yep. So the powered doors have sensors where you can just 
before I go in. I should start the car because it's infested with mosquitoes here. I'll come to the front later on, all right? Oh, mosquito, mosquito, mosquito. Crap. Cool this. And uh, I'm safe. All right. This is the second row. As you can see, um, there are no powered seats in this car, so everything is manual. But I'm fine with it because uh, this car isn't that expensive, to be honest. All right. Uh, now, this is how much room I have. I wish the seat can be lowered though, sometimes when uh, I want to, you need really rest, but then that's as much space I can get, okay, maximum. Okay, what's pretty good is uh, they put in quite some effort, I would say, when it comes to interior appointment. Now, first of all, the leather of this seat, I don't care if it's real or fake, it feels really good. It is the type of leather that is the thick and uh, tough type, okay. So, uh, it's not as smooth or luxurious as Napa leather, but it looks good. The leather looks alright, it feels alright, so I'll give them a pass for that. Okay, there's a grab handle here for uh, when you go up and down for old, old people as well. But this part here, they surprised me. Okay, first of all, you have a pocket, okay? And the pocket is not the flimsy type or the stupid net type that Audi puts in their Q8, right? It's a thick, I don't care if it's PVC or synthetic, whatever, but as long as it, it holds stuff, okay? And you have a USB port. And for myself, for this, for some, the guy sitting next to me, or the lady, and I also have a Western X USB port. Look here, for the third row, they have USB ports as well, and this one gets to open the door as well. Pretty nice, not bad, to be honest. Okay, so everyone gets their USB port. That is a godsend, and there's a tray, and it's not just a, any tray, you know, I'm surprised by this because there's a rubberized mat here that keeps your stuff from uh, moving around and you can remove it to wash it. And you have, yes, a crab claw and another crab claw for your drinks. And they really operate like crab. 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 Not crap. All right. C-R-A-B. Crab. Yep. Both sides get it. And uh, I tell you, my, my kid was like, my son was like, Daddy, please buy this car. Daddy, please buy this car. I want this car, Daddy, I want this car. I mean, it really appeals, I mean, to, to, to family because uh, my, my son was just like walking, walking up and down, you know, and uh, my daughter as well. Look up here, you have a DVD player, which is uh, costly for the car manufacturer and, um, not something that we will use, to be honest, these days, okay? You get your own aircon, air conditioning controls at the back here. Uh, pretty straightforward design. The vents are here, you see that? Okay, uh, this is rather flimsy, but uh, I mean, there's an aircon vent, okay? And the third row as well. I really appreciate that, okay? And then you get some lines. Seriously, for this price, there's quite a bit of feature, and the dashboard doesn't look half bad, right? I mean, it's there's just no pretense in wanting to look luxurious, but it is able to give you that modern uh, feeling that that uh, a modern car should. Okay, move the armrest up. I can I can walk over easily. Let's uh, put my ass here the passenger side okay so like all like most oops i'm sorry i have no idea why it pointed towards me let me turn you back okay look down here like most japanese mpvs you have you can put your stuffs here okay of course uh, if it's like a wellfire with all the huge compartments that would be cool but then it restricts me from walking around i prefer this this configuration okay and this one cup holders and it can do something that I have no idea why. I really, what does it say? Do not, 
close when storage is used. So this warning is to tell you that if you have drinks here, do not close it. I'm not supposed which who would need that warning but um, isn't it pretty obvious that if there are something here but nonetheless that's the warning <laughs> do not close when it's in use but what is this for i have no idea i really have no idea you do you guys have any idea what is that for this one why and it's, it's not like you can hold it in place. You couldn't. It just bounced back. Alright. Maybe it's a fidget tool. Anyway. Uh, there's nothing down here I can pull out. There's none of that. Now, there's a 12 volt socket over here. Traction control button is hidden here. There's another compartment here. There is a... Uh, what is that? A USB port. A USB port inside here. And then uh, there's a USB port over here, auxiliary over here. And then there's another compartment over here. And what? There is a USB port as well, okay? And this is a five volt uh, fast charging USB port. Wow, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven USB ports for seven person. Brilliant, okay? That's into you. And, and, and these materials, they're all hard plastics, okay? but they are all high quality hard plastics you run your fingers around it is it all feels nice smooth and uh this is it's all right it's not as bad as the one in the x-trail there's some gloss black material here i mean they tried their best you know they're trying to give you a lot while charging you lesser okay so uh i appreciate that there's a little tray here for your phone so you can as you can see there is a lot of compartment in this car uh, pretty practical, I would say. Uh, the door bins are not big, but you can put a bottle. But you don't need to rely on the door bins that much, you know, because uh, there's a lot of compartment in this car. And seating room is. Uh, this is one car that I don't need to say that I'm 5 foot 11, how much headroom or leg room I have, right? All three rows, you get a lot of room. And this car is jam packed with features. It's, to be honest, I mean, there's no. There's no uh, what do you call that Pow powder light or whatever it's just a mirror here but then uh, this is pretty bright this is pretty bright okay and uh, there's a dash cam see it comes integrated with the dash cam so you get a lot of lot of features with this car and uh, what's the price 135,000 when I drove this car back yesterday right they're like, they're like oh then I guess I say take a guess maybe 300k yeah I mean, none car guy, none car guy, no idea, Serena or El Grand or whatever. They look at it, they thought, they guess, you know. And, uh, yeah. So, pretty nice, I would say. I'm surprised by this car. In, in, initially, when uh, Bing and Con said that, oh, they got the Serena, and then uh, I, I, I wasn't that looking forward for it, but now I'm... It's pretty all right. Uh, the ride is pretty rubbish. The uh, handling is rubbish, but it's an MPV. It's an MPV. All right, that's my review. Cheers. Uh, yeah, so I really hope you guys can subscribe, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, please subscribe, and uh, if you like what I'm doing, and watch my other videos. I've done like 750 videos in two and a half years. Uh, try to review as many cars as possible. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll book hard and um, continue that. All right, cheers.